<laughs> this is so funny to me. I love it. <laughs> uh, it's not that I'm laughing. It's like, what? So what is podcast? She explained to it, and that was the whole reason. Are we? We on? All right. Well, we're just gonna go into it. Mike Wessel with ants marching. Uh, we've been off a couple weeks. I've been a water park in my backyard. Did a bunch of other stuff. Things been crazy. So now we're back, and uh, during kind of the break of doing different shows, um, I have a good friend, Gunnar Wellbanks, who went down to Memphis and just beasted out in the strongman competition. That's where we're going. No, you really did. And like, okay, so tell me to start this off. So the Gunnar Wellbanks. He's a, he's a football coach, defense coordinator. For I'm just a linebackers coach now for Valley View High School. I used to be defense coordinator for Jonesboro High School. For Jonesboro yes. High School. And you guys went to the playoffs and all that stuff. Yes. You had a good record, so I did. And I know you, for, for since I've came to Jonesboro, at least for years, but you're Valley View. And we kind of have a similar background as far as the, the weightlifting, the strength conditioning. Mm-hmm. We both have a good feed off that. But, okay, so I'm going right into this. To what you just did, which was right. impressive. How old are you to start? I'm 43. I'll be 44 in October. Okay, so 44 in October, and you went to Memphis and did the Strongman. It was a strong USSC, which is United States Strongman Corporation, Strongman on Bill. It was a, a USCC sanctioned event. Okay, and what? So before we go into what, it, what's what's it mean? What was the prizes of this? What was the purpose of this for you? Uh, the purpose for me is mark it off my bucket list and just see if I can do it. There's, that's that's kind of way I roll. I uh, if something's out there uh, interests me, go see if you can try it. Uh, yeah. Try it, see if it works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. Uh, it's kind of <laughs> like when I tried when I was in your gym and I thought I made a, wanted to make a foray into boxing. As it turns out, I'm not very good at it. Those guys, <laughs> those guys that are really good at boxing, when they continually punch you in the nose, you then figure out, hey, guess what? This is not your deal unless you like get punched in the nose a lot. Well, <laughs> boxing's a different different than what we what, what you mainly do and everything else. And yes, you did try the boxing, but you're too good looking of a man to to do that for your life at this stage. If you were if you were a little bit younger, I could have seen you doing it, but. No, it was very funny. <laughs> Hell, man. Because they keep hitting me in the face. I said, you got to move your head. <laughs> you got to move your head. But, hell, no. Um, going back to what you did in Memphis, man, it was Strong Man on Bill. Yes. And what, what, so now that, let's take me through this. So you just said, man, this, because I've never known that. You've done the Spartan races. Yes. The Beast races. You and your wife and your family have all kind of, you got to go about and do these things and have this fun stuff. So, and it's it's off of what I love is to see you, to see anybody, not just you, but to know who you are, take their family and do these things, these physical things, these these fun things, go to these places and enjoy the life of something different than what most people do. And so seeing you do all those races, the Spartan races, the Beast race, and all that, the Sprint, and then you just show up, you called me up one day and was like, hey man. Make sure I, it really was. It was like, he's like, hey man, I need to cut some weight. My own point. I was like, because <laughs> the, the funny thing to me was like, I got to be 220 tomorrow at four. I'm like, well, where are you at right now? 219. I'm like, you're good, man. Just maintain, but like, you not knowing that side or knowing that side of him, just double checking. I mean, and then so you show up this, this Memphis, the strong man. And you're 43, so is there a division for that? There is. Now, I competed in the Masters Division. Now, do understand, I didn't just show up. Okay, <clears throat> that's what that's why I don't understand. I didn't, I, I didn't just roll into it. Uh, I've known about it for a little while, mm-hmm. uh, probably about two months prior to the competition. I called the, uh, the owner of the gym that sponsored the event, uh, you know, that set everything up on Bill Street, and said, hey, man, I'm interested in competing in this. Um, I was wondering, is there any way that I could possibly come over, um, work on some of the implements to see if I can actually compete? Mm-hmm. Because the deal is, I don't want to just show up and embarrass myself. Uh, in anything I do, I always want to be prepared, just like I always tell the kids on Friday night, be prepared and you'll never get embarrassed. Uh, so the deal is, I wanted to be prepared, see if I can do this. If it's something I can't do, too old to do, not strong enough to do, go ahead and move on with my life, find something else to be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I called him up. Uh, he hooked me up with a guy named uh, Mike Tumanello, who basically is uh, he's a guy who has been in it for uh, several years. I think he had said he had been competing. Uh, he's also a master. He's been competing for the last uh, eight or nine years. Uh, then he, now, where's the Masters of Vision start? Uh, the Masters of Vision starts at 40 years old. Okay. Now, if you go to some of the bigger shows, that shows they'll have a 40-plus uh, and a 50-plus. Uh, so the deal is, uh, in my weight class, if I were to compete in an open division uh, with some of the young kids, yes, the top of my weight division would be 220 pounds. But uh, let's face it, at 43 years old, you're not as strong as you were at, say, 33. Uh, probably stronger a little bit at 33 than you were at 23, but still yet you can't rebound, you can't compete. But that's that's an interesting thing. I like the way you just said that because I was the strongest I'd ever been physically. Now, weightlifting plate-wise, probably not, but I think at 35, 37, physically, I was the strongest I'd ever been. I felt like a different person at that time compared to what I felt like when I was 23. Yes. Did you have that, that, that was kind of your, was there a peak there for you? Oh, yeah, probably. Because um, you used to lift really heavy a lot. I did. I used to lift really heavy, and then as I got older, I ended up having a couple surgeries on this shoulder uh, because of it. I had one in college from playing baseball, and then uh, I was benching heavy, doing triples at too much weight, and, um, and tore my rotator cuff and tore my labrum all at the same time. Uh, Dr. Brandt fixed all that up for me. Uh, turns out that um, it tore again in another spot. And uh, shortly thereafter, uh, the second surgery and rehab nearly killed me because uh, I, like I say, I was going through uh, two a days. That's back when we had two a days. Yeah. Going through two a days with my <laughs> arm in a sling, and it was 115 degrees, um, and still trying to do everything I needed to do. So I went back to him and said, "Hey, man, is there anything you can do to take away the pain?" Uh, so basically, what he did is he cut in and he cut off the end of my collarbone to give it a little bit of room to move around in there. Okay, I have found since that uh, I said I'm going to go ahead and lift and I'm going to run this rotator until it tears all the way through. But if I till can, the wheels fall off. Till the wheels fall off. It, but if I can keep it strong, then uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue to lift and uh, that will uh, keep it from hurting quite so bad. Because the deal is, if I do, oddly enough, and you may feel this way as well, if I take several days off and just lay around anything like that, my body starts to hurt. <laughs> so uh, oddly enough, it does. Right yeah. Joints hurt if I if you lay around and don't do much. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of kept me, you know, kept me doing that. So you you like what? Well, my thing is like when I sit down at the end of the night and I'm just chilling. I, and I own the gym and everything else. I'm looking at like right now. I've got a, kind of a big thing going with the kids class. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking up what I forgot. What I, what I need to go, okay, I want more balance, I want more whatever else. What are you looking up in your crazy ass? Because you're like, man, I'm just a high school coach, and I'm just this and everything, but I like to be active. And I, I see the Spartan races, but I, I've never seen, I've never even rabbit holed, like, oh, yeah, man, strongman contest. Uh, well, the deal is, is like I say, I am, uh, I'm okay at, at lifting weights just because I've been doing it for a long time and obviously I teach it and everything else. So <laughs> I'm fairly proficient at moving weight. Uh, and generally speaking, it's in athletic positions. So I started looking at, uh, when I heard about a strongman contest, uh, I actually, it was called the Clash for Cash on Bill. They've had it, uh, I think this past year that I competed in was the fifth year. Uh, and I'd heard about it uh, right around the fourth one, I guess it was. So I started looking it up. And I started looking at some of the events, and I'm like, ah, yeah, I might be able to do that. So like I say, I called up, uh, uh, I got in touch with uh, Mike Tuminello. I went over to NBS Fitness in uh, Cordova is where it's at. Mm -hmm. uh, they have all of the strongman implements. I go in, I meet with, uh, with Mike. Uh, we start out on the axle bar. He's like, he put some weight on, said, all right, clean it and press it. He looks at me and said, okay, looks like you're pretty proficient in pressing. Uh, so we go ahead, get a little heavier, a little heavier. He's like, all right, I might be able to work with this guy a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we go outside. Uh, that's when we get on the yoke. And I don't know if you know what a yoke is. No, explain that. A uh, yoke would be, um, it basically stands off the ground, makes kind of a square. Oh, and yeah. Basically, you set it on your shoulders, you stand up with it, and you walk mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. Uh, so we None did, of this, by the way, looks even like... <laughs> 
Because I, I like to do that. This is different. This is what I'm saying. Like, I like to box. I like to get in the face. We had this conversation earlier. Like, you don't like to, you don't like to get hit in the face. I don't like to be hit in the face, no. So, so, but this looks nothing like I want to do. Like, I'm so sick of lifting heavy weight at this point in my life. And I'm younger by two years than you. But you lift so heavy. And it's like, this this stuff's crazy when you see it. it well, really it, it's not necessarily that I want to lift heavy. I just want to lift a little bit more than that guy right over there. <laughs> if I can do that, then I'm cool. It's outrun the bear in the woods. I yeah, can outrun that's, that's the it. bear. I can outrun you. And oddly <laughs> enough, that's part of how the competitions go. You have to gauge up because it's all pointed uh, based on your finish. Uh, so mm -hmm. if there's 10 guys in the competition that's in your age division, the winner of it gets, uh, you know, the winner of whatever event gets 10 points. Next guy gets 9 points, 8 points, 7 points, all the way down to 1. Uh, so basically you do need to watch what are the other guys doing and uh, how can you kind of save save a little bit possibly mm -hmm. for the next event that you may need. Um, so so it's not like you just can't just go like, man, I'm going diesel on everything. Ah, like I was, do you have time in between the events? Uh, yes, there is a lot of time, uh, but I think that's possibly what got me a little bit uh, because I didn't do um, – one, I think nerves. Like too much time. Um, too much rest. Uh, no, no, I think it was. I don't, I don't know with those events you can have too much rest. Okay. <laughs> well, man, when I slow down, I, yeah. I'm good for four or five straight hours just killing it. Yeah. But if I slow down ten minutes later, man, I'm done. Well, I think uh, what we did is we started the competition started at nine, and I want to say it ended at maybe two ish. <laughs> so. And all now, the deal is, is like, you're not you're not actually going all this time, yeah. but sitting waiting. you're you're sitting and waiting, trying to stay loose, waiting on your name to be called, you to step on the platform, you to go. Yeah. So it is kind of a you know I've got to sit, and, that, and that's kind of my uh, deal. Basically, if it comes to something I don't know anything about, sit and listen or ask questions to the guys that do. Yeah, and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm picking the brain of all the guys that. Uh, that, that showed up and do know how to do this. Technique and advice, stuff like Absolutely. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one thing that I did find out is um, I roll up to the competition. I've got my bottle of water. And I see um, uh, Mike Wikowski, who's, uh, he's, he was the oldest competitor. He's uh, 46 good years Spanish old. Good Spanish name, right? Yes, there. good Spanish, Spanish name. Yeah. <laughs> actually, uh, actually, Mike uh, uh, immigrated from Poland when he was 12. I know. <laughs> Oddly <laughs> enough. From Poland when he was 20? When he was 12. 12, oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I, had, I knew it was Poland. I was like, yes. But, uh, so when, uh, but anyway, uh, so I'm talking to him, and, and Mike has his bag full of different drinks and, and eats that he has prepared throughout the day. And I'm standing with my bottle of water, and I'm like, okay, Mike, what's that one for? Well, this is for a little bit after we do this. I can go ahead and keep my uh, blood levels at this point, and I need to go ahead and, and keep my carbs right here. This so is the day of the event. Uh, this is during the event. <laughs> I then yeah. took my last sip of water and walked over to my wife. I said, hey, I need a, uh, I'm going to need something to drink and possibly G something to eat. Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> well, so uh, the deal is, that, and bless her, it was all she could do because we're, uh, uh, we're on Bill Street in Memphis. She, yeah. she leaves and she comes back and they brought me a monster and a payday. Jack and three Jack and Coke. Hey, right that, there. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So I'm standing there with my monster of payday looking at all these guys that have all these things prepared so they can stay energized. But hey, once again, everything in life is a learning experience if you'll let it be. Be prepared. You won't yes, be embarrassed. Absolutely. Be prepared. Absolutely. <laughs> I can see he's got his meals for that because I wouldn't have known either. It's not like, oh, no, hell no. You don't know what to expect. It's not just like clue. right now, if we went to a tennis match and I had to play doubles, eh, we're, we're getting trounced. We ain't going to learn to go. No, that's pretty awesome. So, so, like, you spend the day, you what ended up happening? I, I want to get to that point where, like, you came to me or you, you called me on, was it? Thursday, I think it was Thursday. Friday. I think I called you. I think I called you two days in advance, yeah. maybe. I think maybe I called you on Wednesday. I had weigh-ins on Friday. I drove over Friday afternoon so I could do weigh-ins. I couldn't be over two twenty, uh, but and I had and the deal is I normally walk around at about two seventeen, two eighteen. But you obviously know uh, lifting heavy and fueling yourself to lifting heavy, you're gonna put on some pounds. 
So really and truly, I had been flirting around that week all the way up to 226, uh, stuff like that, which I really didn't want to be. Which That's going to be another cat and mouse game that I'm going to have to figure out how to play. How your how your body reacts to all this, too. Yes. That's, that's yes. a big deal in this, that people don't understand. It's just like funny, because you're describing the, uh, the routine a fighter does. Like, you're describing, like, we got to go and drive here the night before the competition to weigh in, do our stuff, and then drive all the way back, do all this stuff, make sure your diet's right, make sure your hydration's right, make sure where you're going to be through certain levels through the day, when you wake up, when everything else. And you, that's, it, it's very, that's interesting to know that those guys do that too, because I would yep. have never thought that. The same as you, um, being this is your first event, so you get there, you figure out a couple of things that you did wrong, but you called me on whatever you like, you told me your strategy, and I don't want to, but it was, it was like, I was like, dude, this guy's like, when I'm sitting there, I'm going tanning. I was in the Pantanic Park yeah. and I seen you go. I was like, oh, hell, God, what's up, man? You tell me what's going on. And I was like, you know, I can see you You weren't just going to do it. That's the thing. Some people, like, go to these Spartan races and everything else. We're going to. You were going to win it. There was there was no, there was a difference. It was this thing. When you talk to people, like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And they're like, we're going to have fun. It's going to be like, no, you were going to win. Because one of the things is like, look, I think I got an advantage of it. I'm almost just as strong as these guys, but I'm faster. Yes. You know, and so clearly the things that you watched, because even when it was the yoke, some of the videos you sent me, when you did the yoke and I watched the other guys, I was like, dude, you were smoking compared to them. Now, was there a difference in weight for you? Because uh, no. Um, now, the deal is... Everybody is, carried the same weight. Yeah, everybody, everybody in my division carried the same weight. Um, now the, the difference being is one thing that I found out is the guys that I'm generally going to be competing against, they're going to walk around at 240 mm -hmm. and they're going to cut to 220 and four weigh-ins and then they're going to lift the next day at 235. Yeah. Just like they're fighting. At, just like right. fighting. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Uh, and like I say, as they explain all that to me, and once again, I had no idea. I find that out, but, um, possibly... I, and I don't know. And like you, know, you said, you naturally walk around at 43 at 220. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So when you were, just go backtrack, when you were younger, what was the, like, the main heavyweight? Because I've lost in 30 pounds. I used to be 280, used to be 250, now I'm about 240. You know, so it, it was like, it was at 2, 3, 10. So do you, have you lost them 30 pounds too? Because weren't you like 255 or something? You were, no, no, no. No, so I probably, uh, probably, I the biggest, it, probably the biggest you ever saw me was, I think I made it to, I think I made it to 232 one year. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah, no, yeah, no, I wasn't two, I've never been a 250. No, yeah. for some reason I thought we were at the same weight at one point, because I, when I was, when I cut down, when I was always just after a wreck, I went from 280 to 250, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so, you do this. You go through the competitions. How did that strategy work out for you? Being faster, thinking that you were faster and just as strong, or did you think you had a disadvantage of being strong? Uh, well, yeah, I probably do have a disadvantage uh, in strength um, to some of those guys. One thing is, one thing that helped me is uh, I'm a fairly good presser uh, because they allow you to use hip drive. So basically, you can turn it into an Olympic lift. Now you're not using an Olympic bar. You know, just like we were using football. Yeah. It's not an Olympic bar. It's an actual bar, so it behaves a little bit differently, but you can use hip drive. Uh, so basically, it ends up just being a push press. Mm -hmm. So you can dip and re-dip, you know, at the top. As long as you lock it, uh, then you're good with that. So I'm fairly proficient in that. Um, then, obviously, the moving events, I do have an advantage because I am a little bit smaller guy than some of those guys, uh, and I'm also a little taller guy than, they, than those guys are. Because I'm guessing most of the people that are uh, involved in this, you know, they're former powerlifters and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm not big enough to be a powerlifter or anything. Uh, so I do have the movement advantage uh, over that. So um, I was able to, uh, I was able to win um, in the uh, in the press, in the cleaning press, the actual cleaning press. I was able to, I finished uh, second in the um, in the yoke walk. Yeah. Uh, the deal is with the yoke walk, and I now have a yoke at my house. 
Oddly enough, <laughs> I was doing them this morning, matter of fact. That's not odd to me. Okay. Not, I know who you are. That's not odd. For some not. people it is. Uh, the thing is, is the breathing and bracing while you're running with the yoke, while you're moving as fast as you can with the yoke on your back, that's a technique thing that you yeah. have to learn. If you watch so, it. No, explain that real quick because that's that's interesting. I wouldn't have guessed that, but there are certain it techniques is. we use breathing when, with what I do as well, and I always have people do certain things, but explain this. Explain right, the well, breathing the breathing technique. bracing is, uh, if you watch my video, um, if, you could, if you could have seen me, because I knew exactly when it happened. I didn't know what I did, but as I'm first run was great. I picked it up. I get probably halfway through. Should have blown the guy out of the water. I should have won the On event. the way back. On right? the way back. Yeah, gotcha. okay, gotcha. Um, but I think probably, um, I think I let too much air out. And I start to wobble back. I start to do this as I'm coming back. So I'm no, I'm no longer on the straight path. Is that I How much is weight is it? Uh, it was um, 520, I think. 520 or 540, something like that. Good God. <laughs> I don't even want to look at that stack. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, so, <laughs> like I say, as I'm on my way back, I realize I'm doing this. And I have now lost my head of steam. Um, and I'm now just struggling to finish. And so you see the guy that I was actually racing, you see that's where he almost catches me right there mm. because um, I obviously I didn't do it correctly. Yeah. So that's, once again, that's a technique I was trying to learn, and I was actually working on it this morning. Uh, so um, actually I had my son videoing me. I was out, and I was doing my yoke runs. I think today I only worked, I think I only did uh, 470 or something like that, 477. Uh, so but you're I, doing light, lighter, like 100 pounds or so lighter just to get your breathing technique. Yes, yes, try to get, get everything that. right. Yeah. yeah, so, and I'll do, I did, I did lots of runs today. Uh, so I was doing, uh, I was doing 40 feet double pick runs. So um, I probably, I think I may have gotten eight in today. Um, what I what I do basically is I take one day a week, which that will either be Friday or Saturday, depending on what's going on. Uh, and that will be my basically focus on strongman stuff that day. Uh, and today was that day. So I did, uh, worked on um, log press, you know, and then, then came out and did uh, yoke carries. Okay. So, like, when you're going through this workout, because what people that are watching this or are going to watch this don't know is you're a strength issue coach in high schools. So you're mm -hmm. one of those knowledgeable guys I know. There's maybe two that I know that. I respect as much as you as far as strength conditioning, as far as understanding and looking at the different things that are coming out now. Yeah. The futuristic, not staying in that past. But what do you, um, explain some kind of what your beliefs are as far like you, you win this, but like you've been, you've been doing all these things as far as your whole life, as far as strength conditioning. And you did this now, the strongman thing. Mm -hmm. What do you think as far as, are the best things for people to lift. Where, where would you be? It's like if I, if right now, if you were to say, okay. If I said, you have one thing, I get to pick one thing for you to do, what would it be? One implement? Yeah. I'm, what was the best thing for men? Is there a difference for, to you? Best thing for men, best thing for women? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say there's a difference. Now, there's a difference in uh, testosterone that men and women are going to have. But as far as if I gave you one thing, uh, I would say I'd put a kettlebell in your hand. And just do swings. And, well, no, you can do swings. You can do windmills. You can do side presses. You God, can do lunges. You can. You do, showed me those windmills. Those oh windmills yeah. I now every them. you can pretty much. Uh, matter of fact, I had a high school kid over to over to my gym, which I have gym at home nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, over this morning, and pretty much every day when he comes to lift, the first thing that goes in his hands is a kettlebell. Because basically everything that we're gonna do, and if you if you even looked at the the oddly enough with the strongman stuff, everything you're gonna do in baseball, everything you're gonna do in football, everything involves the hips. Everything involves a hip thrust. So guess what? Let's start out with that swing right there. Let's go ahead and get that movement pattern down. Uh, if you're looking for athletic performance, extending the hips, the extending the hips, absolutely. Yeah. No, I agree. every bit of it is functional. Balance everything that goes into it. you can do all of it. Okay, so let me go on the the negative side of that because I, I it's easy to go negative on certain things mm -hmm. and it, but what do you think the concept of people as far as lifting and doing these things because you're forty three years old you do these strongman competitions you're in shape you've had former injuries which everybody does but that was during athlete like when I've been injured it's always been when I've been athletic I've never hurt myself lifting. 
yeah, so to speak. So these people that are doing these things that would, they, they, they're going to go, okay, well, he said this. What are the things they shouldn't be doing at 43 years or 40 years old or 35 or 30? I would say probably unless you're very experienced and you know your body and you know everything and you've been in it for a while, don't do anything heavy. Listen to your body because uh, the deal is, is um, and you know me, when I first met you, uh, you, you had a boxing gym. Mm -hmm. So I stayed with you uh, hitting the heavy bag, hitting the speed bag, working the mitts for probably, uh, uh, what, five years maybe? With the one thing well, that you never stopped doing at the gym was ever working on a speed bag. That made your shoulders. Yeah, good. yeah. Well, see that that was. And I learned that from you. I got that's how I get loose now. I was, I'm, I'm yeah. up there. I don't do nothing until I do speed bag first. But the um, so, so like I say with, with that, that, I couldn't. I could. I didn't know when I first saw you. I couldn't do a push up without being in immense pain from my shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds crazy because I still lifted. I just lifted around it. You yeah. have an injury like that. Uh, if you have something that's wrong with you, something that's functionally wrong with you, don't do whatever it is that makes you hurt. Because that, I mean, that, common sense, don't do that. So, yes. yes. <laughs> but most people don't have common sense because they, they, they believe this trainer that got certified online. That's no, you, you, know, you shouldn't hurt. You shouldn't be really sore. You shouldn't be, uh, it shouldn't be miserable. Well, that's not a mind, and that's what I love about this is because you're almost the same way in beliefs as I am, and not that they're different. I don't want to speak for you, but you know the difference between being a uh, politically correct word sissy, and you know the difference between hurting. You know if, if it's you know you know when that in yeah. your mind if you're yeah. an athlete or any type of you're wanting to push yourself if it's really hurting you or if it's not really hurting you. And when people go past the point where it's really hurting you and they're listening to other people describe that to you, I can see where the people don't know enough education. But with you doing as heavy as you do, you, most people don't get that point of go lighter. Yeah. Go lighter. Go make it easier on yourself until you can get there. They all uh, want to jump in and be lifting like you do. It's hard. It's hard. Uh, because it why, is, why is it hard? Ego. Ah, damn it. That was, that was because the deal is, 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 is I, try, I try not to have a, an ego in the gym. That's one of the reasons why I like to lift by myself. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's my deal. That's yeah. my zen time. Yes. Uh, I try to keep everything positive in my dojo. Uh, I go in there by myself at 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, try to bang it out, try to move around for an hour before I go to work. An interesting thing I heard when I was at, I was at uh, in Rockford, uh, Ohio, when I was talking to the kids and I was talking to the coaches, the one coach said, he goes, when you're in the gym, be in the gym. Mm. Don't be on your phone. 100%. Don't be on, don't be looking at what's going on. Don't be, don't be, picking up. be in the gym and be in the gym. So at five o'clock in the morning, you get up and you're in the gym. I'm in the gym, yeah. What do you, do you listen to anything? Uh, well, oddly enough, now we go back and forth. It depends on if my wife comes in there with me or not. Because the little girl does too, doesn't she? Uh, oh yeah, she, she loves her. Yeah, yeah, she, she comes, comes uh, my smallest one, my five year old. Anytime she's awake and anybody is in the weight room, she's there. She's there working out. She'll grab her. She has a little, uh, I think it's a pound and a half kettlebell and maybe some pound and a half hand weights and some bands, and she gets after it <laughs> so every day. Oh yeah, that's awesome though. That's either seeing what you're but, doing. Uh, depending on what we uh, depend on what we do, I have found that. Initially, when I first had my gym set up and I would go in, well, I want this music, I want this music. And next thing I know, I've spent 15 minutes trying to choose what I need to listen to. That Why do you need to warm it up? I yet. ain't warmed up yet. <laughs> and so I'm now wasted. You've wasted 15 yeah. minutes of your life doing absolutely nothing. So I end up, what I do is I put it on YouTube workout and whatever pops up, pops up. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, uh, for... Um, yeah, a lot of it's repetitive. It'll be techno music that's not very interesting or anything like that. But it is. It's background. <laughs> so your wife walks in. Like, yeah, she's <laughs> like, you got to be kidding me. You're in your spandex. It's cool. It's well, whatever. Yeah. Lights. Everything. Yeah, I mean, that's the cool part about living at the house. You you slip <laughs> on some spandex and you go to the weight room, pull some shoes on and go to the weight room. You're not okay. trying to impress anybody. Hey. <laughs> but anyway, what I was yeah. saying into uh, uh, earlier was after you got me boxing, um, 
obviously I injured myself doing a flat bench press. And uh, I didn't, I, I never been, I never did a flat bench press for probably about seven or eight years. Since high school? No, this was, this was after college. I was, okay. uh, I was a strength coach at Nettleton. It was an odd story. Um, when I had first gotten there, uh, they'd been, they'd been 0 and 10 the year before I got there. My first year there, we were three and seven, you know, we're searching for answers, searching for answers. Uh, finally, I go to the head coach. I said, look, man, I said, uh, if you want them to be tougher, you want them to be stronger, you want them to compete, let me run your weight program. And uh, I think partially just because they didn't necessarily want to deal with it, they said, okay. Uh, now, like I say, at that point in time, I was working for a head coach that was on his way out. So um, when, what year is this? Because when I that first... is uh, That is 2002, I think it was. Okay, because I was with Arkansas in 2006 when uh-huh. I came to Arkansas with the Razorbacks. I was like appalled. He was even Springdale. The bigger schools in the state didn't have weight rooms yet. Mm-hmm. I was like, "What? There's no strength coaches. There's no weight rooms. Like it was a it was a non. You had garages with a couple benches, maybe is what people were working on in 2002. Yeah. I couldn't imagine it being in a better at Nettleton. Uh, no, it wasn't. We had a uh, there's a little small room upstairs. Uh, we had your standard, uh, yep. you know, four. Four little uh, A-frame squat racks. I think they may have had, uh, like, the safety bars on there. They did have some of those. Of course, I'm not a big safety squat bar user yeah. myself. I don't really like them. Throws the balance off as you're doing squats. But anyway, uh, and then we had, I think, three incline benches and three flat benches. I think is what we had. So, uh, you know, we utilized what we had. I think uh, the, the the biggest power clean that we had with that crew um I think may have been like 165, 75 pounds, which you as a strength coach knows that's that's pretty pitiful. That's not. Uh, that's now not, the deal is, you fast forward five you years start later. Start warming up, maybe. Was, <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah. You fast forward five years later. Of course, the kids got in there. They buy into it. Now, one of the one of the ways that you get them buy into it is you have to be into it. You have to believe it. You have to live it. You have to breathe it. And if you do that, you can lead them down that path. And uh, so they did. Uh, you know, you fast forward to 2006, uh, we had a great squad. Uh, we went to the uh, 5A semifinals for the first time in Nettleton history. Uh, we got beat by uh, got beat by Greenwood in the uh, semifinals. Uh, the um, I'm trying to think of the kid's name, the quarterback for Greenwood, that uh, Tyler Wilson. All right, it was uh, he he actually went on to play for Arkansas, played for. Um, I think they played in the. Uh, that was against uh, Northwest. No, no, no. I, I remember. It was he was the, he was the quarterback that came in after Mallet. So yeah, yeah. He, he played for um, Petrino. Uh, he yeah. ended up getting drafted by the Raiders. I think he hung around. I remember his name, but I, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I had a great squad. Uh, they beat us in the semifinals. Next year we go back to the playoffs. Uh, but like I say, strength program, everything intact. I always look at how many kids do I have that can power clean 225. How many kids do I have that can bench 225? How many kids do I have that can – because I could care less about the top number. Yeah. It's just how much can you explode. Yeah. Uh, basically is, is what we're looking at. And but I how think, long did it take you to teach – I mean, you're starting a brand-new program, and that's the, that's the thing, too. That, that was my point about nobody knew this. Nobody was a strength conditioning coach in this area. Nobody knew how to mm-hmm. teach them the right technique. So how long did that take you? I mean, because you went to Jonesboro and did the same thing and went to Valley View and kind of, well, no, Valley View, you're, you're one of your ex-students is uh, mm-hmm. the strength coach, which he learned from you, so which makes it easy. But when you're starting that over, I mean, how long does it take to get the kids to understand the technique of power cleaning and all that stuff? Uh, the deal is, is it takes a, uh, it takes a little bit. Um, basically, you look at your first class, uh, that comes through, and you you really you really spend a lot of time with those kids. Basically, my classes that come in from junior high, I would always spend extra time on form and technique with those guys because you get that right, and then the sky's the limit. Yeah. So the thing is, is you can you can come in, and the kids that that you got as ninth graders, by the time they're seniors, you can pretty much there's a lots and lots and lots of potential that you can you can tap into right there. Yeah. Um, you know, great example, a kid, you know, we're talking about Nelson, a uh, kid that we had there uh, named Derek Lawson. He rolls in as a ninth grader. He's, he's, he's an okay athlete. He's not the super athlete that everyone expects. He's the best. He's not going to be the first kid to kick, 
a pick for the kickball team or dodgeball when in elementary yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> but not a bad athlete, obviously. Extremely hard worker. Uh, the kid, um, you know, he plays plays a little bit as a sophomore, uh, plays as a junior. I think he rushes for, you know, five, 600 yards, something like that. He weighs about uh, 185 pounds. Comes to me before his senior year and says, all right, coach, I want to get as big and as strong as I can. Okay. Uh, at that point in time, uh, the guy I was working for, Donnie Tennyson, uh, he required him to show up uh, two days a week to lift during the summer. I said, all right, Derek, uh, you're going to show up your, your two days. And you're going to show up. Now, is that standard, though? That's, that's is that standard? standard? Uh, now, you do understand this was early. Uh, this was, okay, yeah. I guess this yeah, was mid-2000s. So you got to go back in time a little bit. Yep, yep. That's, um, that's what I was bringing it to modern times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep going. Keep uh, so uh, the <laughs> kid like, does wait, show wait. up. So the kid shows up and works with me either four or five days a week. Right? Special programs for him. And the crazy part about it is some of the stuff I would come up with, I'd say, okay, go and do this. And uh, he would be there at the field house, and he would go and do it. And a lot of times, I would give him stuff that I couldn't expect him to do. But once again, <laughs> the determination of the kid, uh, he goes and does it and comes back and says, what I need to do next, coach. Uh, so that you fast forward uh, to the end of the summer. The kid rolls out there. Of course, I thought I was going to get him at defensive end. Um, oddly enough, our, transfer, our quarterback transfers away that year. We move one of our linebackers to uh, quarterback. Now he becomes our feature running back. He's not playing defensive end anymore, no. so he doesn't necessarily <laughs> benefit me on defense. <laughs> yeah, I had I thought I was building a kid to play defense. Okay, for you, for me, yes, absolutely. But everything works out great for him. The kid ends up being the first player in Arkansas history to ever rush for three thousand yards. First one ever. All right, so he breaks Madre Hill's rushing record. Yeah, uh, and he does it in a game less than Madre played. And you knew, you knew this kid before his senior. Year. How like oh, how much the, the, the changes that you were able to put because he put the work in, the consistency, absolutely. the consistency. Yes, of that, well, the deal is, is that is that's the thing about um, about weightlifting and training and all that other stuff is if you will be persistent and consistent, then guess what. Everything can change for you. Lots of doors can open for you in the athletic world. Uh, if you go down to, and I don't know if it's still there or not, but when Urban Meyer was at Florida, his strength coach was a guy by the name of Mickey Marotti. And so I, I go down and visit with him. I walk in his weight room, and there's a huge sign there that says, uh, there is no substitute for strength. And right below that, in just as big a words, it said, uh, and there's no excuse for not having it. Because that's one thing I love about the weight room. It doesn't really matter how you're born uh, you're genetically. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can, you can, uh, you, it can help you out. But if you'll have a kid that will work, or a person that will work, uh, they can get strong and they can get powerful. It's something that everybody can have if they'll just put in the work. Yeah. Now you're not going to roll out there. Uh, you know, the only way that you saying both. Uh, you know. Basically, uh, there's his mom's, one, there's freaks. Yeah, there's his mom's guy. and dad's genes yeah. come together. That dude could just run fast. Super, Period. super human yeah. beings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, those guys that there are people that can just that were born and can just run. Yeah, uh, and there's people that are born and are just great athletes. Uh, I don't know that great weightlifters are necessarily born. Uh, that's something that you're going to end up having. You got to earn. Yeah, that's 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 title. That's a, you're stepping up the bars because even as I'm thinking as when I was a kid doing with my strength coach who was my head coach, they told us in sixth grade if you're gonna play varsity football, boys, you better get in the weight room now. We have a program. This is what you're gonna do. Blah blah. blah. And it's it's interesting to hear that you know you can't. You're not just you're gonna show up strong. Certain people are stronger than other people. Certain people have that genetics, just like we've talked. But you're not gonna just show up and develop that. That's, it's hard for me to say the way I want to say it because you're not just going to without that consistency, without yeah. that persistence, without that that timing. You you won't be that person, you know. So you go through this and you develop this kid to be the three thousand rusher that he is. No, he developed himself. He well, thank you. He developed him. himself. I didn't have anything to do with. Yes, it. you did though. No, that's the thing. I, the deal you gave is him I, gave him, I gave him a plan. Yeah, but that's, that's all thing. anybody ever needed. But it was your plan. knowledge plan, and he showed yeah. him what to do. That's that's the awesome thing about the people that I like and the people that I like to, I'm sure you like to coach too, is those kids that you go and say, hey man, I've got to clean the bathroom today, but if you go do this, this, and this, and this, 
And they come back 10 minutes later and go, man, what else we got? Yeah. Those are the greatest, those are the that are going to be the successful ones. Absolutely. If, no matter what it is, it doesn't have to, right, right now they're wanting to be athletics. They'll, they'll be successful. successful. But, but they, they carry that trade on to them later, whatever, their job. They're, 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 they're going to go do the, those things over and over again. So you get this kid, where did he end? Did he end? Uh, well, he, had, he went to ASU. They, um, they offered him a scholarship. Uh, obviously, he's you know he's a hometown kid. Uh, he, he stayed out there. The odd part about it was uh, it seemed like every year they recruited his replacement because he wasn't overly fast. Yeah. He wasn't overly anything. He was just a football player. Which could not work him. He could not work him. That's the he was, that was it. So every year they recruited his replacement, but they never replaced him. Yeah. Uh, and he continued to play because, like I say, he did all the little things right. Wasn't the fastest guy on the field or anything like that, but – he was ball. He, he was, was consistent. consistent. Absolutely, he was consistent. But you knew what you were getting the day that he walked on the field. Yep. And he's going to show up. So you, this is one of the things that I find interesting about you is that we both have the same kind of passion in different ways towards different things. But let's go back to what we originally said. What were you, what would you say to people or parents to watch out for for their kids? As far as injuries, because I see it and I go nuts. I don't, I don't have the temperament. You're you're a high school guy and you deal with the public. I don't like public very often. So um, it, it's one of those things where when I say it to people, I kind of, I'm, I'm a dick about it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, you would be politically better. Yeah, uh, I don't know that I'm a whole lot politically better. But um, <laughs> the deal is, is one, the only thing that I see is everybody nowadays, all the parents want to, um, every, every kid is working for a scholarship. Yeah. Uh, so, so they've, they've got to specialize in that sport, which, in my opinion, that's bull. Okay, yeah, I know why. School, but explain that because my high school coach had us run track. If we were Absolutely. Yeah. Had us. Well, why would you do that though? Because, because one, here's one thing you need to do is you're in high school one, uh, and or junior high or elementary or whatever because they start specializing early now. Yeah. Very early. Uh, but the deal is, is you you don't know what you're going to develop into or what you could develop into. Chances are it's going to lead to burnout. It's going to lead to injuries. You're seeing so many more young kids uh, baseball having Tommy John surgeries. It's all like baseball, that. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, so well, many games, basketball too. Oh, yeah. So yeah. many games. It's like what the hell? Like, I mean, develop that, technique. You, develop well, my deal is my deal is one. Uh, if you don't play a million games a year. You might still have a little bit more hunger about it. Yeah, uh, that's what. That, I mean, the deal is that's a great part about football. You know, it's our last team sport left. Uh, it's the only thing that we got still that everybody has to work as a unit. But anyway, um, point being is you never know what they're going to develop into. So don't specialize. Play everything you can as long as you can. Because guess why we play? We play to have fun. We play because we enjoy it. No, that's not the, no, no not that, that's bullshit. No, because these parents are having them play because they're going to make it. Well, the deal and is, they're first graders and they're yeah. playing baseball and they're playing seven games a week and they practice two times. And, but they're going to make it, man, at first grade. You know, that, well, that's, the, I'm the gonna thing be is that, about it. I know. You I know, know, I'm sorry, um, but it's like to me that should be common sense. A lot of these parents will take, uh, if they would take the money that they had spent playing whatever travel sport it is from the first grade to the 12th grade, go ahead, take take that money. I mean, you could probably even pull a big chunk of it and go out to the casino and have a good time if you wanted to. But go <laughs> ahead and stick that into a bank account, and guess what you got when the kid graduates high school? A scholarship? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and spending money. And, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, Buy him a speed ladder and look up YouTube. There you go. You know, yes, thank you for agreeing with me at least. Oh, uh, you know, I wasn't going to disagree with no, you. No, I know you were. It was a very easy setup. <laughs> but, but that's the thing, though. These parents, I mean, you're from an athletic background, but they're, they're not. And it's not their fault. No, it's not. They're, it's, it really isn't. And, and let's go back to the positive side of something. The parents and everything else are just trying to do the best for the kids. They are. They, they are. They're like, okay, they get told by Susie and Jody that live in the cul-de-sac they live in, the gated community, that this is the this is what they need to do because that's helping Johnny. Well, I'm going to do that too, and it might not be the right direction, but they don't know anything themselves. Um, do you feel like the coaching has gotten better 
as far as the, the because now I'm going to turn this into the, like before when I came here and especially in the Jonesboro era, that's the way the coaches were. The coaches were the parents. They were just that played high school mm-hmm. and never went past high school. But I played high school football, so now I can coach it. Yeah. And now it's a little bit more technical. Do you think it's evolved a little bit to where now they're bringing in people that know what the hell they're doing? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, they are. Now, obviously, technology has led to the rise of people doing more research Just and, when we talk and about things film. like that. It's yeah, crazy. and, yeah. you know, you can film stuff. So, yeah, it's gotten better. One, because uh, attention is brought to actually training now rather than just going and playing a sport, which, once again, like I say, I think um, in my off seasons that I ran for a number of years, uh, depending on what time uh, when football season ended, uh, like I say, for many years there, when I was at Jonesboro, we went to the semifinals. And uh, so our off season would start generally around de- December the 1st because we would play on Thanksgiving, uh, you know, weekend. Mm-hmm. And um, we wouldn't touch a football until – now, sometimes the kids would get one out and throw it, but we wouldn't touch a football until it rolls around to next late March, April. Because guess what? Let's go ahead and put that back. Here's the work that we got to do right now in order to get better. Preseason. So, right? yeah, 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 absolutely. Preseason. It's building on those things, those fundamentals, those skills that they don't have during yes. that time. I agree with that. 100%. Because the deal is, is a kid, I don't know, other than a freak broken leg or broken finger or something like that, generally speaking, your kids that will live in the weight room and they will be, and they're the stronger kids, they don't get hurt. Uh, because, and you know this from being a college strength coach, the reason why we have these uh, programs is your muscle is a suit of armor for you. And the more that you can make your suit of armor, guess what? The less you're going to get hurt. Now, the kids that won't do all their squats, won't get correct depth and stuff like that, guess what? They're popping hamstrings, they're pulling hamstrings and stuff like that. The kids that always do, uh, and obviously those are generally some of your better athletes, and unfortunately, they don't like to do what you tell them to do because they can get away with a little bit more, uh, you know, when you're not looking. But uh, your kids that do everything that you ask, they generally don't get hurt. They continue to plug through uh, 10, 11, 12, 13 games. But they're they're generally not the the very top strongest or very top athletes. They're just moving the consistent Mm -hmm. ones. They're they're there. They're the playmakers. Sometimes mainly the O-line guys. You know, it's a lot of those guys that stay healthy unless it's knee situation, yeah. you know. But <laughs> it, it cracks me. It really does. It makes me laugh just because the, the the mentality. But what would you say to any high school coaches out there? Because, I mean, I, I do have a lot of respect for you. What you're able to do at our age and what I'm able to do, and there's very rare. That, that's a rarity. Most people that I that even when I go back home, my friends, I'm like, we're 40 years old, boys. Like, what are you, what are you doing? They're like, ah, I'm good in the golf cart. And they're retired. They're, the, you know, they've got yeah. big bellies and everything else. And they're not paying attention to anything about their lives far, but they're, what they're pre- presenting to their children, I guess, is like what your little girl does. She goes in the weight room, what Talon does. That's yeah. all he wants to do is be in that weight room and be in there and be consistent and be doing those things because it's fun. We don't make it a hard job for them. Yeah. You know, it's 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 work, but it's not work. It's a fun thing to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. What would you suggest to people that are parents, strength coaches? Because there are certain things that I have that I hate bars. We're going to disagree probably on that on certain aspects, mm-hmm. but I hate bars. I'm my job as strength and conditioning coach for Arkansas. Oh, was, I thought you meant the other kind of bars. I thought you were a big uh, big fan of those, but sorry. What bars? <laughs> like which ones? Like the nightclubs and bars. I didn't. Oh, know, I didn't know what direction you were going. I'm with huge bars. I'm a yeah, huge yeah. Bar I was fan. like, hold on a second. No this bars is not the guy. Back. Back. No, no, oh, oh, I get it. Yes, it's the same guy. I, mean, all right, all right, I was talking. Yeah, we ain't talking about those clubs. Clubs. Okay, but like the bars that you put, I don't agree with that. Like uh-huh. I, I think because how I was taught as a strength and coach, even though we use the bars. Mm-hmm. And how long I've been an athlete, I see so many issues with my shoulders. You've mm-hmm. had shoulder issues. Anytime there's a bar involved, even I hate cleans. I think I can get more out of my hip ups of doing five yeah. minutes because of the way I've trained. But what are some of the things that, like, you basically have squat, deadlift, bench, hand clean, power clean yeah. in high schools? Mm-hmm. I'm going to give an answer, but what were the things that you would like to see that are not those things implemented? 
Uh, well, um, you know, one of the things, and you, of course, you've seen my tsunami bar. Yes, uh, well, you know, I'm a big proponent of those. Uh, and this year, explain was, what the tsunami bar is so oh, people wow. understand because yeah. that, it's an awesome thing. Okay. Uh, well, a tsunami bar is basically a flexible bar that you can, uh, that oscillates as you lift with it. So the weights will move up and down and around as you're lifting with them. So it forces you to stabilize yourself and your balance as you're doing it. Uh, basically, uh, and I can't remember exactly the stats right off the top of my head. I would have brought my papers with me if I knew you were going to ask me this. <laughs> but um, you can get something like, uh, you know, 60 some odd percent more force out of the same weight at the bottom of a lift uh, using a tsunami bar. And me, uh, I was fortunate enough to, once again, very fortunate, I've been blessed to be at all these places. Uh, I was at uh, Clemson uh, visiting with Joey Batson. Uh, who's the head strength coach at Clemson. And some of his guys, uh, one of his guys uh, by the name of um, Abernathy. I'm trying to think of big, big Ab's name, first name now. Uh, anyway, he had, they had invented this tsunami bar. They he had actually gotten together with, oddly Didn't enough. Didn't it start off like a bamboo? David Abernathy was his name. Uh, yeah, the idea comes off of bamboo stick training. Problem is, is you can't load it up enough. Yeah. So David Abernathy gets together with, oddly enough, a real rocket scientist. And I've actually met the guy at one of these strength clinics I've been to in Mississippi. Uh, and they built this bar that uh, basically it has um, uh, different rods on the uh, graphite rods on the inside of it. It almost has a PVC sheath and it's uh, the entire size of an Olympic collar. So it's a little bit bigger bar, so it makes your muscles react a little bit differently. But it flexes as you A little hit. bit thicker as far yeah, as a little thicker, saying. yeah. The diameter is bigger. Uh, so, of course, these are big, giant dudes. You know yeah. how big college straight coats. These dudes are all massive. <laughs> and I'm standing there. I'm basically, I'm listening. I'm doing the things that I do. I'm listening. Uh, I'll ask a question every now and then. They're actually working out. You know, I'll pop a question in. I've got my notebook. They're like, hey, man, you need to jump over a lift on this. No, guys, I'm good. No, man, really, you need to jump over here and lift. No, guys, I'm good, really. I'm just a little guy. I mean, of course, these guys are all, you know, big three-plus big dudes. Yeah. And uh, finally, they told me, no, you got to get us. Okay, guys. I mean, like, I'm almost fearful at this point in time. So I lay down. And mind you, this is during the time where I have not done a bench press for like seven or eight years. Yeah. So I get on there and I do it. I was like, whoa, hold on a second. That didn't hurt. This is crazy. Uh, so then... They say, well, try it with squats. So I put it on my back, and it doesn't uh, act like a steel bar does yeah. uh, because it actually kind of wraps around you, and it, it doesn't run straight down your spine, straight down your joints into your feet. And so as soon as they went in, I had to wait for about a year and a half before they actually got them in production, and I bought one. Mm -hmm. I got one of the very first ones. No, I used that. Yeah, Is that yeah. the one you brought yeah, to the gym? I love that bar. Oh. So anyway, we, we bought some of those at Valley View this past year, and awesome. it's something that we are we're still experimenting, still learning on them. So there's still a new, there's still kind of a new thing that's out there, uh, but we're trying to work on explosiveness and speed and things like that. Uh, Most of the injuries that like I've seen using bars, and I, I don't mean to talk about other places or other workouts, they're they're doing these things, but I, those tsunami bars are amazing because. It doesn't hurt your shoulders in the right. It doesn't put no. that pressure on your back. It gives. The, it's more functional because it's lesser yeah. weight, but it doesn't feel less. Mm -hmm. It's still just as difficult because you even when you're squatting, your body and it makes your whole body contract in a mm -hmm. certain way. And I love the tsunami bars. I think that's one thing. That's a great suggestion as far as and it's easily implemented. Yeah, if those bars you can, can you can pretty much replace a steel for athletic purposes. You can replace a steel bar with that tsunami bar, essentially. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I've kind of went back. Oddly enough, I've kind of went back to a steel bar a little bit. Is but, it because of what you're doing? Yes, because of what I'm doing in competition, competition wise, wise, I've got to learn. I got once again, I have to learn how to apply force to the stiff. Uh, object there that I've got to pick up and, and move or carry or whatever it is. What was the to... one you had the, the chest carry? The Husafel stone? Husafel stone. Husafel stone. How heavy is that thing? How heavy? That one was, uh, I think it was 220 or 225, something like that. Yeah, it looks like the damn trophy, the boot, the Arkansas, the it, it looks like the, because it was just so, so I was like, like Jesus. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's very, very odd, odd to carry. To carry. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and that was, that's one of my favorite events right there, oddly enough. 
Uh, and I don't know why, but I just like it. Is it? Do you find it comfortable? Do you, is there a spot like you like? Is, I, I looked at stones. No, no, no. no there's Even not a. the stones I have the the the, the, head, yeah. the I don't want to do that either. <laughs> uh, no, there's not a spot where it's comfortable. Uh, but once again, it's kind of like one of those things uh, people are going to like and focus on what they are good at. Yeah. And for whatever reason, it's an odd implement that I can pick. And it's a carry event once again, so I can kind of do that fairly quickly. So I like it. Yeah. You like you, things you're good at. your event, you're yeah. good at Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you, <laughs> so after this, what, what's your plan now? So you win, which you win Beale Street. Mm-hmm. All right. And so now you're qualified for what? What is like? Oh, I, what that did is that was a national qualifier. Yeah. Now here was the unfortunate part of that. Um, nationals were this weekend, uh, like tomorrow in Columbus. I think tomorrow or maybe oh, next. The, it's oh, either this weekend or next weekend. Mm-hmm. One, uh, it's in Columbus, Ohio, uh, which. I went to Columbus. God's last. country. Yeah, obviously God's country. God's I don't country, know about yes. all that. Yes. Uh, that's enough. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's in Columbus, Ohio. Problem is, is, at, for instance, the uh, Strongman on Bill, and like I say, this is just me speculating, uh, some, of the, some of the events are a little bit lighter, uh, especially for guys like me, because um, they want to put on a good show. Yeah. Most of your local shows, you're going to have a little bit lighter weights because ideally they would like for people to not zero out. Yeah. Because we're not professionals. Yes. We're doing this for yes. fun. Yeah, it's yeah. a hobby uh, type thing. So um, now when you go to nationals, that's the real deal. Like, for instance, we had a, uh, the very first event would have been a log press at, I think, 225. I don't know. Have you ever done a log press? Explain that. Yeah, explain this. <laughs> have you ever done a log press? No, I don't no, know. That okay. I no. All right. Well, I just got my log is in it, the is other it day. Is it the one with the handles in it? You... It's got the handles oh, inside. It is twelve inches around, and it does not behave like a steel bar. I'm at tired. All. I'm tired. I don't even want to look at that thing. Uh, so <laughs> basically, you have to clean it and get down. You got to hip it up to your shoulders, and then dip, drive, reset. Problem is, is the bar is so big around that your head's in an odd position uh, as you're doing this. So once again, it's a technique that you got to learn. Yeah. Um, if we, if I had, if I had gone, um, I'm probably, I'm probably sitting. It, it was an event where as many reps as you can get in 60 seconds. Okay, I'm sitting at two or three, maybe. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, no, I don't know. So yeah. please excuse uh, my ignorance. Oh, on that. it's like, okay. 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 So your excuse. 60 seconds is, you know. 60 seconds. I'm expecting more of you. Of no, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you 60 <laughs> seconds is an eternity. Yes, I when know. You're, uh, when you're loaded with weight. <laughs> well, it's the same thing when you fight. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, he's tired after 30 seconds. You ever been in yeah, there? Yeah, exactly. Okay, same thing. Uh, it's the same thing. Um, like, for instance, this morning, um, and today was the first day I've had the opportunity to work with my uh, log bar. Um, so I worked up to... Um, I think. What neighborhood do you live in? <laughs> do they just see you out like there he goes again? Because I know you uh, make axes and shit, you know. So you're you out there welding your metal, well, and then walking down the street with a yoke. Are you, is there a call? And you by yourself? I'm by away? myself. I actually don't okay. live in a neighborhood. <laughs> okay, you don't live in a neighborhood. Yeah, and I live on top of a hill, so you don't see me doing any of these things unless <laughs> you come up there and see me doing these things. Okay, and well, you're like, this is a weird guy right here. Well, no, no. It's, I'm thinking scaring neighbors. He's like, he's got this bar that just flim and he's going down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, like I say, I worked up to <laughs> 205 today. Um, like I say, my plan is to peak out mid-July with that thing because I'm going to go to a competition in Little Rock, uh, where they do where it is a log press instead of an axle press. I was able to do the axle press because it's close to the tsunami bar. I was able to train on it. Tsunami okay. bar actually helped me out greatly on that. Uh, but anyway, at Nationals, so what's, what's what's Little Rock? That's another qualifier. It's Nationals? a 2020 qualifier. So my plan Explain is that. my Explain. plan is I want to go. Uh, now that I think I can compete. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to go. I want to win that. I want to qualify for 2020 Nationals, and I want to go. I didn't, ah, I didn't go. Yeah. Me a yeah. 2020 is It's okay. Year. It's in a when year. Trump this gets is 19. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's, uh, that's when Trump. 
<laughs> I was like, 2020, what's the 2020? Yeah. I was thinking vision. There was two things were happening in 2020. Just like clubs yeah. and bars. Gotcha. Same yeah. thing. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, so the deal is that was going to be at, uh, that was going to be at 225 pounds, which like I say, I'm only getting, you know, maybe three reps on that. Yep. The yoke carry would have, instead of being the five, I think it was 20 that we had in Memphis, the yoke carry was going up to 650. I have worked yokes in the past at 590. I've never worked one all the way up over six. So once again, and oddly enough, that yoke, the crazy part about it is it crushes nice. your central nervous system so much that what you do next is affected by it. Okay. Okay. So like you just, it just drains you. Well, the deal is, is that yoke, it touches everything from the back of your ears all the way down to your big toe. It engages every muscle that you have. You're just struggling, just yeah, to, just yeah. to hold absolutely, machine. just to get it up off the ground, and not not only am I getting it off the ground, but I'm walking with it fast, as fast as, as you fast can. as fast as I can. <laughs> yes. Uh, so those two things would have went up, if I remember correctly. I think there was a there may have been a 550 pound um, wagon wheel axle bar deadlift as well in that one, which. Once again, for me, that's for the big, huge, strong guys. That doesn't necessarily go with me. I need to build to that. I need to work to that. Well, you just, okay, so it's just like this. It's just like when you're fighting or any other sport, like you, football, whatever else. You know what you're very good at. So yeah. You're, gonna, you're, you're, you're in this camp. and when, like So it's a year from now, 2020, in this camp. Do you know when you're starting and what you're going to really focus on right now? Uh, now, right now, right now, all I'm doing is I'm working on increasing, basically increasing my deadlifts and increasing my presses mm -hmm. uh, and learning the techniques for the things. Because, like I say, with the moving events, I, I are think, you going to any places? Because there's nowhere, I mean, around here, you're kind of the, the guy that's doing it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, surely there's some other guys around here doing it, but I once again, it. this is it's just kind of a personal challenge to me. But no, I do it at my house on my back. Well, no, no, that, my what, I'm, what I'm asking is, do you, do you like you you went to Clemson? You go to you oh. as a strength coach, you it just a learning your education. You love to. I I know you've been for years, so you've always every year you're going to a different kind mm -hmm. of issue. every year you're going to learn something more to expand your your whatever it is. For you, so are you doing that for this now? Are you going? Uh, no, this is still pretty much a hobby of mine. My my main goal is still uh, to get to get high school kids and junior high kids bigger, faster, and stronger. Yeah. This is just a hobby. I'll tinker with it and figure things out along the way. Do you think, try not to get hurt? Do you think you will do any of this stuff and implement it with your high school kids? Oh yeah. Do you the think uh, the deal is is I will uh, one one thing I always do is I want to master something before I try to have somebody else do it. Excellent. Yes. Uh, so one thing that I do plan on doing with some of the kids that I'm training this summer that will actually be coming to my gym is uh, is the yoke. Once I get the yoke mastered. Uh, because the deal is, is one of the guys that I competed with in Memphis, he's he's oddly enough, he's a football coach at um, maybe Millington. Um, and he says this right here is one of the best things for just increasing absolute strength. Well, and, I would think as far as when it goes towards football, that's just, just driving force. Yeah, it is driving force. Absolutely. It's just, you're, you're the, like you said, it's from the top of your mm -hmm. neck, you're holding, and you're walking. You know, however, it's just like fireman carries everything else, but that's what happens yep. when a running back runs. Yep. A D lineman goes, all yep. lineman goes, any any position, even a receiver, if they're they're blocking, you know, that's they just driving force. Yep. So that's what I'm gonna figure out exactly how I want to implement it in them. And yes, absolutely, that will be one of the things that I'll put in for some of the kids I'm working with this summer. That's yeah. almost to me, like and I'm I'm not trying to make it like over exaggerate, but that's kind of revolutionary. To me, no, it's kind of because I don't do anything revolutionary. Bullshit, bullshit. I ain't gonna take that because here's the thing: most strength coaches and most coaches that call themselves strength coaches that are high school around here or whatever in the the towns communities that don't have the budget, they're limited to what they have. So I understand. So they do squats, they do, which most mm -hmm. kids lift out of their quads, not their ass. Mm -hmm. Most people do. They're doing all this weight and this bench press. They don't do it the right way. They're not worrying about their back. They're not worrying about their lats, their hamstrings, and all these things. Though, just in that one lift that you're saying, like the yoke, that's that is revolutionary to introduce that because nobody else has that. Just like the tsunami bars, nobody else has that. Yeah. Nobody has that con concept because most high schools, to me, that I've seen, are still doing 
bar squats all the time, yeah. as heavy as they can do. When I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, I've been an athlete, pro athlete for 20 years, and I've been doing hip-ups. I've never put a bar on my butt. Mm. So I, it, me, I have a different concept, yeah. but for high schools, that seems a lot safer. But like you said, you're mastering this yeah. put in. So you don't think that's revolutionary to you, because nobody else is doing it. I've not well, seen one the is, is, well, in that case, the yeah, bar or the yoke. I don't want the guys that I'm playing doing that either now, right? Son of a bitch. No. Kind of short. You know, but no, but that's the thing, too, is you've you've already got to jump ahead of everybody. Well, we'll try it and we'll see. Because there ain't no strength because you can't get the guys that are that just, you know, like, hey, man, we used to bench, we bench, to go, okay, well, now I'm going to be the strength coach and teach the yoke. You're ahead of everybody. You're revolutionary in this because by the time they learn what the hell the yoke is and they learn how the bar the thing's complicated as shit and then have to do it and teach it. You know, you mm. are years ahead. That's awesome for you. That's awesome for your program. No, I'm excited just well, no, like say, I'm, I'm I'm hoping we can see some gains out of it. Yeah. yeah that's, just keep kicking rocks over until you find something that works. <laughs> <laughs> so you go you're gonna go to Nationals Little Rock. Uh, well, no, that'll be another, um, I think, the one in Little Rock, it uh, takes place July the, maybe the 13th, if memory serves me correctly, it's called Arkansas Strongest Man, takes place, um, I think it's on the Arkansas State Fair rounds, if memory serves me correctly, and um, so that is actually a 2020 qualifier. Okay. So what I would like to do, ideally, if I can go down there and, you know, uh, and can put on a good show and compete and possibly uh, qualify for 2020s, then I would like to... Uh, of course, my wife gets on me because every new thing that I try, I basically get obsessed over it. Of course, the thing is, if you're going to do something, you might as well try to do it right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Might as well try to be the best at Race it. There you go. Why, would, <laughs> why wouldn't you? <laughs> well, that's the thing, though. Like, Why wouldn't you? Most people don't have that mentality. Everybody else has the kind of, I want to get in shape tomorrow. Well, then after two weeks, they're like, okay, my pet peeve, and I'm going to go negative, but... They, they spend 15 years being this obese person, this fat person, this person, whatever it is, not even in, in it, marginally overweight. But then they want two weeks into the weight room or the workout room and they want these abs like on the cover of the magazine. Mm-hmm. And then they quit. They're, I wanted that, but it's too hard. It's too hard. And when you're going to everything that you've done, I've seen you, brother. I mean, I've seen you for years do this Spartan race. I'm like, Jesus, like... I can't keep up with that. Like, and I thought I was a badass. I really thought, I mean, truthfully, <laughs> because I'm like, man, I'm fighting, and this dude's just over here lifting the heavier shit that I even want to even think to lift, but it's because you want to be the best at what you're doing. So you don't get, you just, you go into it, you research, you research, you do your studies, and most people don't do that. Most people don't do any type of research before they go into these Sense. things. To where you're, you're so overeducated in this, now you're implementing in your, to your job. Which, Which is awesome, awesome to me. me. I, I mean, I think you're one of the, the most interesting character people I've met. And I, as far as just just good home dudes, I mean, you 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 got a great life. You're a good father. Oh, I, well, the deal is, I've had a very blessed life. Um, you know, obviously, uh, everything has led to this. Got a great wife. Got three great kids. Got a great job. I've had several great jobs. You know, got great friends in the industry and everything like that. So yeah. I mean, everything, um, everything that has led up to this, I mean, obviously everything's a learning experience, but no, I've got, I've got a great life. got no got no problems at all. <laughs> You're one of the people, like, I always saw the same thing, man. If you hear me complaining about something, like, I'm just, uh, well, the deal, the deal is, the deal is, is, yeah, I mean, we obviously all have our everyday things, but, man, if you put things in perspective, there's always somebody that has it worse than you. Yeah. So, and that's one thing I like. That's one thing I like about the weight room is everything is the same in there every day. Uh, nothing gets mad at you. The, the weights don't have an attitude or anything like that. And if you can start out in there with a positive day, yeah, then your day is going to go so much better. We used to have a the school I, the school that I taught at right before that, uh, right before this past one. We had a rule in our hallway: you couldn't speak a negative word until nine o'clock. <laughs> because the deal is, is yeah, you do. I mean, obviously we work with kids and there are some good days and bad days and everything in between. But if you start your day out griping and complaining, then guess what? And I have seen it with my own two eyes. You can suck the energy out of everybody around you. Yeah. Absolutely 
100%. So the deal is, like I say, if you'll just have that positive attitude and work for the best that that day can be for you, then you're going to win that day. That day. Then let's start over again tomorrow Mm -hmm. and hope to win tomorrow, and and we'll just see how it works out. That couldn't have been said any better because that's – that's one of those things where, like, when I when my knee wasn't hurting, I was into this training. I was getting ready for this fight. So I was, every day I like to wake up and see what time I was up. I was like, man, I'm going to post this. Post 3.30 in the morning. Because I want to be like, okay, now it's time to go. Now I got something to prove to, to myself. Now that, now that everybody knows that I'm awake, okay, now I want to prove to myself and be better that day than I was yesterday. And it's small steps. Even if... It, even if it's my day off, when you have, like, people have the day off or whatever, I don't know what you necessarily, but I have to have certain days off for me. It's my body recover, mm-hmm. everything else. But during those days, I'm like, okay, what am I doing? My focus on what I need to do and everything else. Where am I at? How am I starting my day? I had my water before I went. I had all these things. But most people don't put the preparation into starting the day off. How do you, do you go to, do you have, like, your meal's made for you? Do you have... When you go to bed, I mean, is it just a rat race to go, okay, I got my leg with me? I go, okay, my coffee has two mugs, yeah, one with water, so I can pour more water in after the one thing's already been filled, so I'm drinking a cup of coffee. There's a certain way I do my morning to be ready to go at 4 o'clock in the morning. Do you... To be... I mean, you're 43, you got three kids, a wife, a lot of responsibilities, all these things, and you're doing these competitions, and you're coaching football... And you're a strength coach for them as well and dealing with all these things. So how do you prepare yourself for that? It's a heck of a uh, life. The yeah. day? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean. To be positive in that nah. day. Going into positive. Well, uh, now I will say this. Um, one thing that you got to do that you can, one thing that I hate about nowadays uh, is the power of social media. Uh, the people that want to set, the people that uh, that, that want to sit there and look at that. Um and, and basically waste their day with that. And that's nothing against, I mean, obviously, I think this is social media. Yeah. I believe. <laughs> no, no, no. I was, we're going to go to this. He but, uh, but anyway, but anyway so my, point, my point uh, is, is people that will sit around and, and they'll devote time looking at Facebook and worrying about what something somebody else is doing. Um, obviously, in a lot of places, I don't know that that social media necessarily makes people happy uh, because they all they're always understand people don't post their entire well some people I guess do post their entire lives on so but people don't post the bad things that happen to them in their everyday struggles on social media they post all the good poses and this and that and everything else and I mean there's all kinds of people that we'll see out there that uh, if you just looked at their social media you know their father of the year well the deal is I know them it's like. Uh, look, dude, uh, that's the only four <laughs> times you saw your kid. That's the fourth, uh, you know that's what the fourth time you've seen your kid this year. But yeah. Uh, so yeah. The, the thing is, is, is people will look at that stuff, and then they start feeling bad about, well, maybe I'm not doing this, maybe I'm not doing this, maybe I'm not doing this. They're not keeping it up with other people? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. The, deal is, the, only thing, the only thing that you can control is you. And, and you're wondering, I know I'm sagging off on something that doesn't No, have no, I love to do it. No, anything. do your thing, but, um, dude. That's awesome. But my deal is, is I, I have my alarm set at 4.30. Uh, sometimes I can sleep till my alarm. Sometimes I can't. Uh, basically, I'll get up and I'll drink uh, either my cup of coffee or my pre-workout. Um, I have a set time. I read the newspaper. Um, basically, and, and... You're still one of them? They, well, they make no, those. No, 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 no. It's a, online. It's an online newspaper. <laughs> oddly enough, yeah. They won't deliver the paper. They won't deliver the Little Rock paper to here. I understand ah, I'm not okay. from here, so I don't read the Jonesboro Sun. Yeah. Nothing against the Jonesboro Sun, but I like news from the entire state. Yeah. I'm not from here. Uh, so anyway, I read the newspaper. A uh, great part about it is if I see, uh, I can click on articles that I want to read. Yeah, uh, That's a great part about it. So basically when you, and the bad part about it is our state newspaper has gotten uh, to where they're posting negative articles about the government, about this and that, and guess what? I don't need the, I don't need the newspaper to tell me what's bad. You know, God blessed me with a mind that I can think and I can reason myself. 
go ahead and present me the facts, and then I'll sort it out on my own. So I try not to click on the negative articles. Gunner um, Wilbanks, how dare you? Yeah, how I know, dare think you? for myself, it's crazy. You, follow the line. Follow yes, the marching line. <laughs> so the deal is, is I, end, I primarily end up reading the sports section. I check the court scores on ESPN. Uh, I clean off my emails. Um, and, <laughs> you don't even look at it. Yeah, funny. well, most of the time, you know, you get the junk emails or whatever for, you know, our Northern New Hampshire University thinks I need a, an extra master's degree or something like that, I think. I think so, yeah. uh, and I got all kinds of people wanting to loan me money. Um, but uh, <laughs> I anyway. get a lot of princes that want me to say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those exist as well. So I clean my emails <laughs> off, and usually that leads till 5 o'clock. I go in. Um, Put my uh, pull my workout shoes on. Go to the weight room. Uh, I lift until uh, and I try to stay focused the uh, best I can. Sometimes that wanes a little bit. Uh, I try to stay focused and lift, banging out for an hour. Uh, if I get to the uh, found that basically don't just walk into the weight room, walk into the right one with a plan. Know exactly what you're going to do that day. Yeah. Uh, and then if you want to do some little bit extra at the end, uh, you know, for looks or whatever it might be, pretty. go ahead. Yeah, if you want to look pretty, then go ahead and you can get over and pose in front of the mirror, do exactly whatever it is that that you want that to part. do. I yes. love that part every day. I dedicate 30 minutes to that. I'm sure you do. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> no, that, that's my normal routine. Then uh, that takes me to 6 o'clock. Now it's time to get the kids uh, up. Uh, then go ahead, start cooking breakfast. Um, it's one thing that my dad, uh, when he was home, when he wasn't out working, one thing that my dad did in the wintertime is he made breakfast every day. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's one thing that I try to do every day. Now, I'm not always the best at it, but uh, we'll always try to have some sausage or bacon and eggs or pancakes and something like that because, uh, oddly enough, and I don't know that uh, it's just one of those things that have always stuck with him. Of course, my dad is still with me, but that's mm -hmm. one thing that stuck with me is he made breakfast every day during the wintertime. Yeah. So, guess well, what? Well, no, that's like, I, I, not coming from that, but like, my family is factory workers, but I, that's one thing I love to do with Talon. Mm -hmm. Is when he's here every day. Now, the Mickey Mouse pancake maker is the most amazing thing yeah. in the world. It, it does wonders. You're the greatest cook ever, but. Like, that's the one thing I like to do because the conversation that I have with him when I'm making or if he's if we're having when he's having breakfast is always, I find with my kid, I don't know, with you, with your family, is always the most general. It's always the most informative. It's the funnest conversations. Because then the, the, the rest of life has not started yet. Yeah. It's the most positive. It's the most, it's the yeah. one that he's the sweetest, he's the cutest at that time. Then the rest of the day he has sugar and turns into yeah you know, yeah so but yes but no the breakfast thing is a very cool thing so that you do you try to do that every day try to do that yeah. every day uh, sometimes unfortunately the kids they end up eating a bowl of cereal maybe uh, of course my youngest one has an affinity for Eggo waffles with Nutella on them oddly <laughs> enough sometimes I may have a three course breakfast cooked up on Saturday morning and uh, hey dad can I have some uh, waffles with Nutella. Okay, I guess you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more of this for me. I, well, uh, I seen when what was that Krispy Kreme opened? You sent me pictures. I did. How many? How many? How many donuts they had when they finally? Opened, I was like, you fat ass. Like, uh, yeah, oh, I did. Uh, like I say, that was one of those things where. Um, did you did you wait in did. line? You waited in line. Well, yeah. the thing is, they got three this. donuts or something. Yeah. He was one of the fatties that waited in line. I did. Hey, I uh, get here was the thing: <laughs> is they opened at. Four o'clock or five o'clock, whatever time it was. Well, guess what? I was awake. <laughs> I had, that was when I was lifting at your gym. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, right. So I was awake, um, sitting there. It was a weekend, I believe. Memory serves me. Saturday. Saturday. It was, it was a Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sitting there, just sitting there, like, well, I'm not supposed to go lift today. What am I going to do now? Uh, you know what? I'm curious to see how many people are in the Krispy Kreme line at whatever, 4.30 or whatever it was. I'm so going to use that same so, story next well, time no, I get arrested. I, I, well, I was just curious, I was just sir. curious I wanted to see how many people were naked in that bar. That's, <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. I didn't know. I needed to. <laughs> I mean, so I was curious to see how many, and my whole entire family loves Krispy Kreme, so I jumped in the truck, drove to Krispy Kreme, and once again, I'm also a uh, I'm a people watcher. So <laughs> once again, I'm curious as to 
who are exactly the people oh, that get support. up and work? Because they did give, uh, I think, maybe a free dozen donuts per week for like a year or something like that. I did miss out on that by about 30 or 40 people. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that, you got to understand. That seems low to me, given the community. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> they understand, like I say, I'm thinking it may have been 4.30 or 5 o'clock. It, was, it yeah. was very early. It was yeah. well before the sun you know, uh, came up that day. <laughs> and uh, it was interesting waiting outside, waiting on, listening to the people's conversation while I am uh, waiting in line to get to first. You don't think, Christmas did you, ratings. you don't think they were watching you? You don't think they were watching you doing the same thing on the, there's the people, the guy, who, uh, the, guy the guy that's got abs. See, he's here too. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, <laughs> Because <laughs> that, that morning it cracked me up because I got pictures like, you fat. I was like, God damn, you know. But I guess job security for me, for the rest of the people. Yeah. Is, you need to put one right next to your gym, man. Mm, I tell people all the time, I'm like, look, if you don't feel confident about yourself, I said, even the way you are right now, go to the mall on a Saturday morning and see if you don't feel wonderful. I feel, I feel like Brad Pitt every day. I, the deal yeah. is, is every year, uh, or not every year, but whenever we go on uh, vacation, my wife and I like to t- uh, go to a beach on spring break. Mm. And every year she obsesses over, uh, can I wear a bathing suit? Do you know, what kind of bathing suit can I wear? You know, do I look right in this one? I said, honey, you look beautiful in all of them. And if you need further evidence, just walk out by the beach when we get there. <laughs> you're gonna be the you're gonna be the best looking one on the beach every time, no matter what. It's December right now, honey. You're gonna be great for July. Don't even worry about it. Just go through because <laughs> you ain't too far off. You ain't, when you go on those beaches, oh gosh, it's just like I'm winning. I'm still winning. Like I didn't even have to try. It's like the biggest confidence, but. Go back to what you do. That's one of the coolest things is being a strength coach. So what what are you guys looking to with value right now? How is things going? I mean, as far as you're kind of in a rebuilding type thing, correct? I mean, well, um, actually, uh, last year, like I say, that was the first time that Value had won a conference championship in 5A. Uh, now they moved up in classification, if memory serves me correctly, maybe four years ago, I believe. Um, yeah. I remember when so that. this past year was the first conference championship in 5A. Uh, we returned, um, I think it's nine starters on defense. Now we do replace almost the entire offense, but okay, our, offense, yeah, our offense, yeah, our offense coordinator and uh, and the offense coaches, I think they've kind of retooled some things. So we look to be, I think we'll be right in the mix. Uh, you know, God willing, nobody gets hurt. Yeah, don't lose any key guys because once again. Football, once you know, in order to have a good record and advance far in the playoffs, not only do you have to be good, but you also have to be lucky, uh, and you got to stay healthy uh, because the ball can bounce, you know, multiple different ways. Uh, drop pass here and intercept pass there could make, uh, you know, could could change your destiny. Uh, whereas also a twisted knee could change the the outlook of a season. You're as good as your backups. You're as good as that's the way I was here. You're always as good as your second string because that's usually it's going to finish the season for a lot of positions. Mm-hmm. So you come, come off the conference championship. All right. Come, come off, so, so now with nine, that's a lot of starters on defense, yes. man. That's awesome. I'm a defensive guy. I actually hate on because I know you're a defensive guy as well. You know, I'm not. I, well, I was always that guy on the team that was just like, yeah, we're, we're offense. We're, we're a team. But we're doing our job. Okay, the offense ain't scoring points, boys. We'll be, you know, Scotty, I need an interception, run it back. We're going to have to score for us to win. That's kind of how I held that approach. But how do you, my thing is, how do you as a high school coach, does that happen a lot to where you have that, com- is there more camaraderie um, than what you did? Because I don't know. I've been so far out of the, back of the football game or any athlete athletics as far as that team sports so. uh, well the deal is I'm going to say that probably depends on where you're at possibly and maybe how big of a school that you're at uh, because I've been on both sides of that uh, you will have if you got some kids that only play one way uh, of course you and I whenever we were in high school guess what we played every snap mm-hmm. so if the offense was terrible or the defense was terrible that night guess what we were part of it <laughs> uh, and that's one thing that you try to teach kids that it's not a blame game yeah. Uh, you know, if you're playing defense, guess what? They can't win if they can't score. 
So if you lose seven to nothing, it's just as much your fault as it is the other guy's you fault. You gave up the seven. You gave up the seven. Yep. Or if you win uh, 68 to 54, guess what? You stopped them one more time than than, uh, than than what you scored right there. So that you also won because of you. Uh, so I've been on both sides of that. A lot of times it's, it's going to go with, oddly enough, whatever direction the head coach uh, wants it to go. Uh, if the head coach says, hey, defense, you gave up 68 tonight, but you held them under, you know, enough for us to win 72 to 68. All right, so be it. What's the – it depends on what your final goal and all that it is. Yeah. Is your final goal to win? Okay, they did their job. Yeah, it doesn't matter how it got done. It doesn't matter how it got it. done, as yeah. long as it gets done. So, getting it done, you're in – Let's think. It's June, June tomorrow, mm-hmm. June first tomorrow. So you're in almost two days. Uh, no, we season. actually had our. Um, we're in. This is next week. Will be week two of the summer. Uh, term summer camp of summer. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, like I say, it's changed up a lot since we went through it. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. We Just stay, because the rules and everything. Is yeah, we stay. Uh, you know, in Arkansas. If you can get two other schools to come, you guys can participate in a padded team camp. Mm-hmm. So we had a team camp uh, last Tuesday. No, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Uh, we were able to film it. We were able to get some things off of that and teach some guys. We'll have another team camp next week. Mm-hmm. There's a great part about it. Uh, so basically, we get to go padded practice against somebody else, and we get to film it. That was never – That didn't we, exist. That back when we did not. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that you get to see where yeah. you're like – that's a, that's a great thing Absolutely. for. So, what's your plans? So after twenty, you're going to do twenty twenty. Then you're done. You're just not nothing interesting besides the strongman. I don't know. I mean, cut us out because what are you what are you looking at? Because I'm getting ready to stop life as I know it in one aspect, and I'm getting ready to go into something else. And I'm going to tell you what the strongman shit, man. I, like I should have said that, but the strongman, I have no interest in using yeah. my body anymore. I understand. What do you got going on for you? What, what's your next thing? Even the, even the, the I, Spartan races, the beast races, I'm like, that looks too much. What do I plan next? Yeah. I don't know, man. You keep trying it until you find something you like. And if you like something, pursue it. Uh, the deal is, like I say, I want to do this. I want to try to compete. Uh, I want to try to make it to nationals. I want to try to compete with it. Oddly enough, my five-year-old wants to go do another Spartan race. Uh, but the deal <laughs> is, is, and, and I like them. Um, the rest of my family, they think that they think they might be done with the races because sometimes they can be a little hot and miserable. We actually did a um, we did one in Fort Knox in July. Yeah, I, remember. I don't know if you've ever been to to uh, Kentucky in July on a military base with no shade, but it can get uh, no it, trees. No that. tree. It can get pretty miserable, and it did. I mean, it was. I hate to guess how hot it was that day, but it was pretty miserable. Uh, then they went to, they went, uh, we all went to Northern Ohio last summer and did one. And of course that um, one was probably the better one. God's country. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, no, like, so like the, the races and everything else, your kids want to do it. Does that, I I would think in my head, okay, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to do the strong man, if I was you. Wasn't that kind of training for that is completely different? Now, training for that is 100% different. If I were to, now, understand my goals are a little bit different in the in that than they would be in Strongman. Yeah. Because the thing is, there's going to be 5,000, 6,000 competitors show up at one of those Spartan races or any of the obstacle races. My goal is, because most all of them will, um, they'll time you, and all of the times will be posted, um, on Athlinks, I believe it is. Uh, my goal is, once again, for my age group, uh, I shoot for top 25%. Mm-hmm. I feel like if I can be into the top quarter of the population, then I'm okay. What have you ended up at? Uh, I think I've been, it depends on the race. What's um, the top and what's the worst? What's the top and what's the worst? Uh, when I run sprints, I can be somewhere around the, I'm wanting to say 16th, 17%, somewhere around in that. And then when I did the um, the Beast in Ohio, which was a 15 and some change race, I'm not a dude that's built to run 15 miles. <laughs> Period. 
So, so I then, the lighter competitor. yeah, so I then dropped way down. I was in the top fifty percent, top half, but but but, but 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 you can make excuses for yourself if you're in the weight category. <laughs> yeah, okay, the, now, two hundred and over, you're in the top. Had 10. they had they had a, a an old guy. That was 220 pounds with <laughs> maybe a bad knee and a limp. I could have been in the top of that class. 5%, man. You had it. You had yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, I'll run. Um, and I've told my kids they want to. Uh, I'll, I'll go run another short race with them. But as far as the long ones, I did the trifecta. That's where you do the, the, the ultra or the beast and the super and the sprint. Mm-hmm. I'll go run another sprint because running – Somewhere between uh, four and five miles and some change and doing obstacles in between, that can still be fun. When you stretch that sucker out to 15 and some change, to me, that's miserable. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of people, you know, or some people will, not a lot, uh, you know, they'll talk about working out and it's always, I'm going for a run, I'm going for a run. And, you know, I'm like, I, I'm not running. <laughs> well, I've got one of my best friends in the world. Uh, he would always get on me because I would train for these things, but I wouldn't run. Yeah. And he's like, "How are you? How are you doing? How are you training for it, but you're not running?" I'm like, I'm just lifting faster. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I get with the concept. Of I, I'm just I know lifting faster. Just, I can't. Yeah. The deal is, is my body, my knees, my ankles, my back, all of it can't stand the pounding of running. Mm. So the deal is I'll put on a lighter weight and I'll go for a longer time and try to increase my work capacity. Uh, so, yeah. Because you might be able to do it the one time, but that's the time you're going to do it. You're going to back up and prepare for that mm-hmm. one time of what you're doing. Yeah. So, um, so like I say, the and, and then oddly enough, you know, we'll, I'll do something that's running and people are like, I thought you said you couldn't run. I'm like, I didn't say I can't run. I don't want to. <laughs> it's not something that I do for fun. Uh, but, yeah, so, I mean, who knows, future, maybe we'll do something like that. The thing is, is I actually got into that. It was a deal that I did with some of my buddies from college. Yeah. Because I had gotten into, I was lifting and been lifting, been training, or not training, but just been lifting. And, uh, oddly enough, I was sitting in your gym one day, and I would have to set, like, miniature goals for myself. And it would be like, okay, I'm going to do incline. I'm going to do 15 reps with every dumbbell there. And then you achieve that. And you're like, okay, what's next? And next, before you know it, now you don't really have a plan in the gym. You're not working for something. You're not actually training. You're just moving around in a gym. Just doing it. Today. You're just doing whatever you roll Which into. in your case, and not normal people's case, you've been doing this your whole life. Yeah. So you've been you've already researched everything you could do in this gym. You're like, okay, what is it now? So you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't been doing it my whole life, but I've been doing it since I was twenty. Yeah. So yeah, half of it anyway. Half of it anyway. So yeah. you've already experienced all things. So now it's just finding your next challenge, yeah. finding your next goal. And so I got with uh, started reading. I think I may have been reading a magazine, and one of these an obstacle race uh, popped up. Oh, I know what it was. Some of the the ladies from your gym, uh, we did went and did a warrior dash. Oh, that's right. That's like, right. Hey, that yeah, years, ago. Ago. Yeah, yeah. years and years ago, I said I'll do that. So I did it. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I think in different circumstances, this could probably be fun. So I got with a couple of buddies I play ball in college with. Said, "Hey, man, uh, found a race in Arizona, and there were cheap uh, flights out to Arizona, so we load up. I mean, literally, they were very cheap. Three of us split a hotel room." Um, you know, like I say, we were best friends. We were roommates in college. Uh, we go do the race. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, one of us trained a little less than the other two did. And <laughs> he may or may not have nearly went down on the course. Of course, the funny part about it is he was sitting on a log. About we lost pass. him. Well, he was sitting on a log about to pass out. And uh, me and uh, Reno, my other buddy, looked at him and said, Look, bud, you can either tell that guy right now that you need to tap out and get off the course. Or you can get up and finish with us because if you fall out and have a heart attack, we're finishing this thing and we'll come to the hospital and see you. Because we came all the way out to Phoenix to run this deal. And sorry, man, if you can't make it. So, uh, leave him behind. Yeah, well, hey, we'll see you in the hospital later on. You weren't prepared. He didn't prepare himself properly, yes. Uh, so, we did that. And then, um, of course, that guy said, you know what? I think I'm done with those. 
Um, actually, I think he may have torn a labrum in his hip or something like that, trying to get ready for the next one. So Reno and I go to, we've now been hooked. You know, we liked it. We went and ran one in uh, Cowboy Stadium. It was a stadium series sprint. Oh, uh, and that was huge too. Oh, you and I think, think I ran right. every step in the place. Oh. <laughs> it was miserable. Uh, but no, it was fun still yet. Uh, so now the bugs bit me and said, hey, I want to get the trifecta, which is all three races. Mm-hmm. So I went to Florida and ran a super, and then I think we ran a couple sprints in between, and then last year went to Ohio and did the um, beast. the beast. Yes. Was that, no, the, was the beast in Cincinnati? Uh, no, it was actually in some little bitty town between Cleveland and Young Zanesville or something. Nah. Yes, it, it, yeah, it was it something, was, something along in those yeah, lines. No, it doesn't matter. Just, like it was, I remember, I remember that because I, I seen. When I was when I was researching what you were doing, and I, I always have the, the list because I always want to do the where the dashes on yeah. that. But with fighting, is so much different as far as training. It's like I'm putting myself at risk doing you would, that. Yeah, you absolutely, or, you absolutely, one hundred percent would be putting yourself at risk, and obviously that's the way that you help make a living is by fighting. So you would have absolutely no business doing anything no. like that. And it's, it's one of those things where that's what I've always looked at. I was like, ah, that'd be interesting if I wasn't doing this. Yeah. And so, and even now, I think I'm to the point of my age where I'm like, mm, I'm not interested in that either. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not, me being mobile anymore and being fast or running or doing, I just want to sit on the back porch and watch my kid, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of done with athletics as far as that. But, uh, so you are going to now do the 2020. You're, you're, I'm, I got. You're we, not, you're we saying, hope. You're saying, I don't I'm know that I am. I hope. I, no, I know you're going to. Like that, that's one of those. That's one of the cool things about knowing you and nobody who's watching us. I know you're not going when you when you called me on that Wednesday or whatever. Before, when you first told me about this, cut wait. I know you're not going to just compete. You're going to win. Now, when you get there, the reality of winning might be the percentage yeah. of being in the, the yeah. win. Hey, man, I'm going to say the top 20, 25 is winning because these guys are beasts. But, no, I mean, I love having you on here. I love who you are. I love what you represent. You've always been a positive guy as far as it, even in the community. We talked a little bit about that earlier. But the people that don't know you still know you. And you're one of the people that I, I respect and can take serious. As far as athletically, as far as a coach, as far as learning, I've learned a lot of things about just athletics and training myself from somebody I didn't expect that to. You know, not, not that I didn't expect it from you, from to, from a mutual friendship of not knowing that it was going to come about, and just you being in the gym and everything else. So, man, I really do appreciate you being here. It's awesome no to watch watch your journey. It's really, it really is. Now, here's here's a question I have for you. I know you're trying to kick me off now. No, no, you can still no, 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 talk no, 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 no. The, I'm going to I'm I'm the club. No, it's time to close and all. But how do you watch this or to listen to it or whatever? Is it? Okay, no, no. no my no, wife's no. going to want to know. Okay, no, stay here. Okay, so before, so people know that are watching this. We. <laughs> I asked Gunnar to do this podcast. I said, man, you want to do a podcast? I'm getting better. I've only done a couple. You know, I've taken a little bit of break because there's so much things are going on. And Gunnar asked, you know, what is a podcast? And this is, you can watch this on uh, Ants Marching, a Mike Wessel YouTube channel. So this, go to YouTube. but Or you can go to my Facebook and watch because this has been live the whole time we've been talking. So <laughs> Gunnar didn't know. At all, which is not because he doesn't do the social media. I don't know a lot of things, you know, all that crap. I leave it. That's why Jessica is doing the the cameras and all that stuff. Because yes. I, all I know how to do is just talk. But you can go to Ants Marching, Mike Wessel Ants Marching. There's a certain logo. You'll see a black and white picture. Uh, Mike Wessel Box on Instagram. Where can they follow you? You don't do Instagram, do you? Uh, no. Do you Snapchat? <laughs> I don't. I, uh, of course. The, the deal no, is, Snapchat, Snapchat's a bad thing for adults. But uh, No, um, I do have a, uh, at school, they, last school I was at, they told us to get a Twitter account. So, yeah, I do have a Twitter account, and I've still got a Facebook account. I don't know if people still Facebook or not. Uh, Every now and then I, I see a rare photo change on yours. Which I, I, well, like the me. deal is, I think, um, here not long ago, because it actually did bring my attention to me, is... 
when you and I were corresponding back and forth about the competition, and you put the deadlift video out there. I obviously did not, had no anticipation you were going to do that. Uh. But I started, uh, and I don't, I, I, I try not to look at that stuff too much, but my phone starts blowing up. I start getting hit with notifications. I'm like, what in the world is this? So I clicked on it, and it has like 500 or 600 views. I don't know yeah. 500 or 600 people. I don't <laughs> think. So uh, the deal is, is with uh, with that. So yeah, I've got a Facebook, and then I have a uh, I've got a Twitter account. I rarely post anything to them. Uh, sometimes I will. Um, but here, why, why don't you do this? Because here's the one when we were talking in the living room earlier. It's one of those things where you don't see yourself as that. Okay, but you're you're an inspiration. You're an inspiration of people that people need to know about people like you. Because there's no at all. That. Well, no, because you're in the Krispy Kreme donut in the line next to him. At the same time, you're running these desks. You're inspiring. You're educated. You're helping the athletes out. You're helping kids out. You're helping parents understand. We need more people like you, and that's that's why I have on you. You're you're you don't follow the ant line of what everybody else, and that's why this that's why I have you on this show is because you're somebody unique. You're somebody that stands out that you don't think, you don't want any recognition. I know you personally. I want all the recognition in the world. Look at me, Mom. I don't care. Look how good I look today. Did you tell me how good I look today? That's who I am. Yeah. I know people like you that don't care if people know that you're doing this. You're doing it for the right reasons. You're doing it for you. You're doing it to better yourself. You're going to use the things that you are learning for yourself to do to implement that into making your team better. And by making your kids better, just like I said earlier, you're one of your strength and conditioning coaches at your at Valley View is the guy that you coached. He's already known what you what you expect, and now you're over it, and you're like, "Hey, man, I he already knows what I expect." So when I say that people don't, you don't think that you're popular, you don't think that you're somebody to be paid attention to, but that you're such a rarity. <laughs> you don't think that, and I understand no, that. I but you are such a rarity because there's nobody like there's nobody that's 43 gunner that looks like you, that can do like you, that can move <laughs> like you, that takes care of his body like you, that gives a shit enough to pay attention to tomorrow and going okay. I might not have won today, but I'm but I'm not going to give up. I'm going to be there tomorrow. I'm going to be there the next time. I'm going to be consistent. People don't have that, and that's why I wanted you on because they they want I want them to see. Not only is it is it's good for your life. Look how good you are. Look how good in shape you're. You're forty three. You look like you're twenty fucking five. Excuse me. I'm I, I'm shouldn't be cussing like that. And I, I'm trying not to do that here. But that's now that I, I know this is live. Well, but now it's me. And so they I don't think I used any foul language. No, anyway. you didn't. No, no. and I've been where I, <laughs> I usually cuss more than that. But but that I'm, when I get passionate about something, it's because people don't like you are just doing it just for the course of life. And just for the betterment of your life, for the betterment of your kids, the betterment of your family. You don't think those trips with your family all together, packed in, running a race, isn't a bonding experience? Most people don't have that. Most people don't because they don't want to be active. They don't want they don't want it. They're too scared to try things because it's scary. They've never done that. Well, you've not done these things. You're like, well, I'm gonna figure out how to be the best at it that I can. That's a rarity. And so, like, mm-hmm. I want people to hear the stories like this and, like, what you're doing. Because not only is I know you personally. I know you, you're a good damn man. You're a good damn coach. You're focused. You're prepared in everything you do. You're educated. And if you don't know something, you're going to go ask somebody to find out to help better yourself. In, that's, in the family that you have, the structure you have, that's a great thing that most people don't have. Because most of the time there's a kid over in that room sitting by himself while dad's over in here Playing, and they're all playing on their social media devices, paying attention to what other people care about instead of making themselves better to care about themselves, to, to bring themselves together and be closer, which is an awesome thing. And that's, that's kind of why, like, I, I named the show Ants Marching, but that's that you're not following the ant line. <laughs> I'm not ant. Well, you are, but that's, a, that's not always a bad thing. Ain't you're making me blush now. Well, I'm that, that, I like, but it's true because I mean, hey man, fuck it. I got a man crush. I got a man crush. There's, <laughs> I've got a lot of man crushes. Tough Edmonds. I got a man crush on Tough Edmonds. He's bull rider. But it's you know, but it, it's one of those things where I respect that because it's very. I don't see too much of it, and I want to see more of it. I want to see people maybe follow you, 
Maybe, yes, you don't have to pay attention to the comments or the haters or whatever on the social media, and I know that you don't want the recognition from it because you don't need that. You're self-confident, and your ego is enough for you, for what you want to do. But mm-hmm. most people don't. You need. I, w- I would like you to open up the social media and show people what you're doing so they can do whatever they want with it. But at least that might that might help inspire people because you, you look, man, you inspire me. You make me go, shh. Shit, the guy's two older years older than me. What am I going to do? <laughs> no, I'm thinking about it. Like, I, I think I, I, you're 1% of 1%. You're the top 1% of 60-year-old men, 50-year-old men, 40, 30, 20. You're the top 1% of that. Think about that. Nobody has a body like you at 20. Nobody has the strength that you do at 20, 30, 40. You're the top 1%. Oh, well, so thank you're, you. you're somebody to be followed. Instead of following these people that are that are jackasses on, on on social media, oh, does my hair look good? They're all doing the puffy lips and everything else. That's you're somebody that's leading something and a good example to people. So that's that's a, that's why I wanted John here. Right, well, and you, like I say, thank you once again. You're making me blush. Well, you, you inspire stop. people. You inspire me you, to be a better person, and then it scares me to know that I ain't gonna be able to keep up. So now I have somebody to keep up with. Oh, yeah, so you that's, can. that's, well. Yeah, you can. I might be good at paintball. We might be a there fat guy behind the paintball gun or something. Where I don't find, have to hey, find something you're good at and focus on <laughs> that. <laughs> well, Gunnar Wilbanks, I appreciate you being here today on Ants Marching. Uh, is there anything you want to say? Shout out to anybody? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, somebody, had, somebody had texted me earlier. Uh, I think it was TMC. Craig Miller said that he did oh. it. <laughs> Or TC, what is it? Craig Mel, I don't know. His, what his, is his, his uh, Yeah, he had. I don't see it. On he, there. he had texted me earlier today. Uh, but uh, Craig Mel, like say, the, the deal right. is, you got to understand that uh, uh, one of the thing, one of the reasons that I had gotten into this, oddly enough, one of the ways I got into the weight room is obviously, like a lot of us, was to impress a girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I had some, uh, there was a girl I had my eye on in college. That, uh, you know, she was the prettiest thing at school. Had a couple mutual friends. They told me, hey, you know, she kind of likes the muscled up guys and stuff like that. So, guess what I needed to do? I needed to get in the weight room. And next thing I know, about two years later, I married her. So, yeah, I won right there. Absolutely. <laughs> the weight room left me there, so I got to stay with the weight room. <laughs> We're in on that because that's awesome. You married the chick you went after. Absolutely, yes. Make her buy some. She man. was, uh, yes, that was the princess that I had been chasing uh, forever. And she's my queen right now. Still to this day. Still to this awesome. day, yes. Awesome, man. Thank you for being here. Good and well back. We're done. That was awesome, man. How was that? That was awesome, dude. That long? Not too long. How long, long was it? it? That was four long. hours. That was long, though, wasn't it? It was about two hours. We can do this every day, dude. No shit. That's what I'm saying. That's, <laughs> a, that, that, that's what the, what this is. Is it 